the Laboratory of Horticultural Science, Faculty of Applied Biological Sciences, Gifu University is undergoing studies in the physiology and molecular biology of horticultural plants to expose the hidden capacities within these plants with the goal of adding value to agricultural products. Professor Kunio Yamada will talk about the physiological approaches on floral cultural sciences in the floral industry. Horticultural science is an applied science that involves three research fields, namely floral culture, pomology, and vegetable science. As a specialist in floral culture, my role is to scientifically study and explain the capacity of flowers and their added value as products. My current work focuses on improving the quality of cut flowers. When most people hear the word bouquet, perhaps roses come to one's mind. When the rose bouquet is purchased at the florist, they usually come with a freshness preserving agent containing sugar and antibacterial agents to make them last longer. My work studying roses began about 20 years ago when I was a postdoctor fellow in the laboratory of Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries, where my supervisor specialized in the study of roses. In my postdoctor days, my supervisor determined that adding sugar to the water before placing cut roses in the vase helps keep them alive and fresh for a longer period of time. Based on that work, I endeavored to explain this mechanism scientifically in terms of sugar metabolism and gene expression. The blooming mechanism that was identified was that as sucrose is being degraded into the petals, more sucrose is drawn into the petal cells from the leaves and accumulated there. And the sugar intake resulted in the petal cells to swell due to water influx, thus causing the flower to bloom. Based on the result of that research, I continued to investigate how to create larger blooms in cut roses. Cut flowers are harvested as buds, gradually blooming as an ornament before finally reaching full bloom. However, the same state of full bloom is comparatively smaller for a cut flower in a vase than for a rose on its branch. This observation is where I came up with the idea of generating fuller maximum blooms. Therefore, in order to maximize the ability of cut roses to bloom larger, the key lies in the extent of sugar metabolism in petals. There are two possible methods to facilitate this. The first one is to activate an enzyme in the petals called Invatis, which is a key enzyme for inducing sucrose metabolism in the petal. Unlike roses on their branches, it was revealed that cut flowers have weaker invertis activity. Thus, if we give cut flowers the plant growth hormone auction, which stimulates invertis, it may be possible to generate large, full bloom cut roses. Another method involves the use of light. The growth and flower opening rate of roses vary depending on the wavelengths of light. For example, roses' blooming speed slows down if the flowers are exposed to red light. Therefore, I came to hypothesis that light irradiation has some effect on the physiological metabolism of flowers, and it may be possible to control the flowering rate through light regulation. In particular, Red LED lights slow down the flower opening rate, so we can expect them to suppress blooming during transport and storage. Currently, my work involves giving cut flowers auction, light and sugar to analyze changes in gene expression, enzyme activity, and sugar composition related to sucrose metabolism during flower opening. However, it is not simply as easy as solving the issue with just one factor. I think it is important to use a comprehensive approach. For example, 
If we add too much sugar in the vase water, the majority accumulates in the leaves and only a little reaches the petals in post-harvest conditions. That causes harmful side effects in the leaves. Therefore, it is necessary to improve sugar metabolism in petals by adding plant growth regulators to improve sugar uptake from the leaves. Industrial agricultural research is not research for the sake of research. The mission of an agricultural researcher is to produce results that are useful to the industry. To this end, I believe we must develop an understanding of the industry to gain insights into the issues, explain mechanism scientifically, and ask how the research can be applied. These three guiding principles guide my own research work. Going forward, I will continue my research with the goal of establishing techniques that will please both consumers and producers.